Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve first and last position of an element in a sorted array. So we're given an array of numbers and they're in sorted order in ascending order and we just wanna find a certain value, so a target value that we're looking for. And we wanna find the starting and ending index of that value. So in other words, there could be multiple copies of this target value in our input array. And if we cannot find the target, then we can just return negative one as the start and ending indices. But so let's look at the first example. So we have a target eight and you see that there's two eights in our example and the index of them is, so we're starting at zero. This is going to be three. This is going to be four. So the starting index is three. The ending index is four. So we can return three, four. And in another example, we're looking for six, but we see six does not exist in our input array. So we just return negative one, negative one. Now this problem is pretty easy and pretty obvious how to solve it, right? Like the first thing you do is just scan through, keep looking for eight. This is the first eight, then we keep searching. And then we find that this is the last eight because the next value is 10. So then we can return the indices of these and that's pretty easy, but that's gonna be big O of N time but we want to solve this in log n time, which isn't a problem either because we know there's a log n algorithm called binary search, and that's what we're going to use to solve this problem efficiently. So let's say that this is our input array. We have six elements. We want to look for the target, which is a right? Let's assume we were just doing a regular binary search. How would we do that? We would have a left and right pointer, right? Initially like this, we'd compute the middle value by taking our left and right and dividing it by two gives us the middle. So let's say we put our middle index over here. We look at this value. It's not our target, which is eight. So then we have to update our pointers, right? So we're going to update the middle and we're going to update the left pointer because we know eight is what we're looking for, but seven is too small. So we're gonna start looking at the values to the right of the array. So we move our left pointer over here. We don't have to consider these values anymore. So now when we recompute the middle, we're gonna put it over here, right in between the left and the right. And now we look at the value over here and we see, yes, this is the target eight. This is what we're looking for. So are we done now? That's how regular binary search would work, right? But in this case, we want the leftmost eight value that occurs and the rightmost, right? We want both of these. So how am I gonna implement that? And actually it's technically possible that this value could also be eight, right? But our algorithm would stop here. And if this value was eight, then we would want this and this, the indexes of these two positions, right? So how are we gonna handle that? Well, we can modify our binary search algorithm. So let's actually assume that this value is eight. So I'm gonna change this to an eight. I'm gonna continue my binary search because even though this value is an eight, and let's say we know the indexes of these, so we know this is an eight and the index is four, but we know that the rightmost eight has an index of five, which is what we actually want. So I'm gonna continue the binary search. I'm gonna update, I'm gonna look for the rightmost eight value in our input array. So what I'm gonna do now is update our left pointer. I'm gonna shift the left pointer over here in the same position as the right pointer, and I'm gonna check this value. Hey, it's eight again. It's exactly the target we're looking for, and we have no more values to the right of it, so the rightmost index that an eight occurs at is index five. So in our result for the rightmost index, we'd put five. We don't have the left index yet, but that's what we're gonna find next. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for the leftmost index where an eight occurs. And we can see that this is the position, but we're gonna find it using binary search. So we're gonna restart our binary search. So in this case, we're gonna have to run binary search twice, but we know binary search is log n. So the time complexity is still going to be big O of log n, right? So we initialize our pointers again. We compute, let's say the mid to be over here. We see that this is seven, it's too small. So we're gonna update our pointers. We're gonna put the left pointer over here now, and we're gonna put the right pointer over here. We don't have to check 
these elements. Next, we're gonna compute the mid to be over here, right? So great, we found an eight. That's what we were looking for, that's our target. But we, in this case, we want the leftmost eight value that we can find. So in this case, I'm gonna cross out our right pointer and move the right pointer over here to mid minus one. Last time we put it over here, we took our left pointer and put it over here, which was mid plus one. But in this case, we're gonna take our right pointer, shift it to mid minus one. So now let me show you the code. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a helper function to actually do the binary search for us because we're, we know that we're gonna to have to call the function twice to find the left and the right index. So I'm gonna pass in nums and I'm gonna pass in the target that we're looking for. And lastly, I'm gonna pass in a third variable called left bias. So left bias can either be true or false. And if it's false, then we're assuming that the result is right biased. And basically what that means is what I showed you in the picture. So in, if, we're, if left bias is true, that means we're looking for the leftmost index. If it's false, that means we're gonna look for the rightmost index, the right biased index. So we're running binary search. So let's get our left and right pointers. Left is gonna be zero. Right is gonna be the length of the input minus one. And we're gonna keep going while our left pointer is less than or equal to the right pointer. So the first thing we're gonna check is possibly if our target is even bigger than the number we're looking for. And let's first compute that index. So the middle index is gonna be left plus right divided by two. In Python, you need a double slash for integer division. And so let's get that value. So if the target is even bigger than the position we're at, then we have to, and then we have to search to the right position. So we're gonna take our left pointer and shift it to middle plus one. Otherwise, if the opposite is true, so if the target is too small, it's smaller than the middle index, then what we're gonna do is search to the left. So we're gonna update our right pointer and take it to be middle minus one. And lastly is the case where we do find the target value that we're looking for. And so what I'm gonna do is have another variable called i, so we're gonna store the index of it. Initially, we're gonna have this to be negative one, but every time we find the target value, we're gonna set i equal to the middle index that we just found it at. Now this by itself, right, if we stop it like this, this is so far basically just regular binary search, right? But to make the modification to have a bias to this, what I'm gonna do here is even if we find the target, what I'm gonna do is if left bias is true, that means we're looking for the leftmost value. So even if we find the target value over here, we're gonna still update our pointers. So we're gonna search to the left, meaning we're gonna update our right pointer M minus one. Else is if we're if we're right biased, meaning we're searching to the right, then we're gonna take our left pointer and set it to be m plus one. And this is basically all you need to do to modify the binary search to add this bias condition to it. So now our binary search function is complete. Well, the only thing we really have to do now is call this function twice to get our left and right index and then return that. So Let's get left by calling our binary search function, pass in nums, the target value, and since we're looking for the left index, we're gonna pass in true for left bias, and then let's get the right one, so, and let's pass in false, since this is gonna be right biased, and then we can return our left and right pointers. And by default, if we can't find the result in this binary function, it's gonna return negative one, which is exactly what they wanted us to do. So this is actually the entire code. Let me just prove to you that it works and prove to myself that I don't have any bugs in it. And yes, it does. So you can see it's pretty efficient, 90%. And that is because we did this in log n time, because we're doing binary search. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned something. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon.